Sir, good evening. Hello. Yeah, hello, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, uh, we'll start the session by 7 5, sir. We'll wait for another two minutes. Yeah. But already students are there in the YouTube. Here in the Zoom, some more students will join. We'll wait for another two minutes and 7 5 you can start. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Thank you. So, hello students, um, good evening. <clears throat> so, I just wanted to mention that I was watch, I was checking uh, the, checking your uh, work uh, in the assignments or exercises given in the platform. And what I saw is many students are not working in arrays. Okay, so that is the difference, right? When you start for loop, if then else, all will be so easy that you will work. You will have to push a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, more into this because Aris is slightly um, advanced concept. It's not a difficult concept. It is an advanced concept. And uh, more of you have to uh, actually work on Aris. That is the main part of C. If then else and for loop, they are not the main part of C. So please try to put more effort because you have this liberty of checking the code elsewhere in the internet, learn why they have written like that and then execute. Okay, you have to spend a little bit more effort onto this. Um, but th th that is the foundation for, um, you know, when we say that C is the foundation, here is where actual C starts. There is going to be, um, apart from arrays, there will be linked lists, there will be graphs, there will be sorting, searching. So all kind of your future education depends on these kind of stuff. So I would uh, request all of you to work a little bit, little bit more than usual. Check, uh, check code in the internet if you want, understand it, and then uh, execute these uh, problems, but do it. Okay, so that's what I wanted to tell for today and I'll hand it over to sir to take it forward from here. Thank you. Sir, you can start off, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, ma'am. Yeah, I hope is that the screen is uh, visible to you all. 
and my voice is audible. It is visible and also audible, sir. Yeah, fine. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, in the last session, we have discussed about arrays, right? So in these arrays, uh, we have already completed uh, uh, what is an array and the different types of the arrays. And, you know, I have given examples on one dimensional array as well as two dimensional arrays. And we have worked with uh, some of the applications like uh, searching and uh, you know, another kind of case study where we can uh, use uh, arrays concepts. And also uh, I have uh, given an example in the last, uh, how uh, we can pass an entire array as an argument to the functions. Okay, fine. After that, uh, and whenever we are going to learn in any new topic, uh, not only in C programming, everywhere, you should understand what is the purpose of the topic and you know uh, say for example if you compare with arrays and structures uh, what is the disadvantage of the array how can we overcome those disadvantages to solve those disadvantages what are the topics are available like what are the features are available in the c programming so then only you can understand very well about the new topic right so i want to convey to you like uh, why we are introducing the topic called structures. What is the purpose? In the last session also, I have given a brief explanation about that. And now I'll tell you the purpose of the structures. See, if I want to store a number into the variable, generally what you people will do is, my requirement is you want to store a numeric value into the variable, right? What is the numeric value? Maybe your student ID or your phone number or whatever it may be, okay? So then immediately you can create with the help of the predefined user-defined data type that is integer, int. Then what kind of data you want to store student number? Then immediately you are declaring like this and you know you are storing the value into the variable 10 like this. So this is your requirement. I said, I want to store a numeric value into the variable. So how you will define as an integer, that's good. If I want to store a group of values, if I want to store more than one value, yes, more than one value, again, we are going for, can I store like this? Like simply SNO equal to uh, 10 comma, 20 comma, 30 comma, 40, is it possible? No way. Since whenever you are going to utilize the variable, you should tell to the compiler, Yes, I want to store this many of data into this variable like this. So by default, a predefined data type and integer will allow you to take only one value at a time. So that is the reason if you want to store more than one value, uh, the two that should be same type. That should be same type. Even if I want to, yes, so I'm going to go for declaring an array. Same, if you want to store 10 student numbers, you are defining like this, right? Fine. You can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, something. Yes. Now, like this, you have assigned into single variable. That is a SNO, which is having maximum length is 10. So, why I am introducing the arrays concept? By default, the data type integer will not allow use more than single value. That's why with the help of the predefined data type and you know with the help of the arrays concept i can store multiple values that is fine now again what is another requirement now i want to store one student number another one is student name and another one is your marks like 46.5 and uh, you know your address something hyderabad like this so again, the limitation of the array is what? You try to understand. Again, what is the limitation of array? So this is the array, array concept. Again, what is the limitation of the array? In this arrays, you can store similar type of data. All values should be a integers. I can't say one value integer, another value float, another value cap, another value integer like this. Why? Because this is Array. Array will take only homogeneous values. Okay, fine. Now, I want heterogeneous values, like any type. 
maybe the integers, a string, float, another another string like this. So in this case, to solve this, what does it mean of like this? This is a particular record of the student, right? Record of the student or an employee. This is a record. A record. Like where I can use these kinds of records? Yeah, you can see if you take any product, the product having different structures. What is that? The product has product ID, product name, date, like manufacturing date, price of the product, so like this. Okay, quantity, anything you can identify as a product, product color and product weight and you know, uh, then uh, who are the suppliers of the product and so on. So this product should consist of various types of the data types. It's a combination of anything. Okay, so in this scenario, I should go for concept called structures. I hope you understand the requirement, the need of the structure, okay, to store different data types. So is there any user defined data type? So that is my own data type. Is there any product data type is available? Is there any product data type is available? No, right? Only we know in care and the float, right? Now I want to define a data type as a product which consists of a combination of a combination of anything. I can say first one is integer, second one is care, again next one integer, next one float, next one care, like this. Let's see how I'm going to do. Okay, so now with the help of the structure, I'm going to create my own data type. Okay, so in that, whatever the combination I want, I can take. Okay, like this, how I want to take based on the requirement of the user. Okay, now let's see. Now in this, uh, today's agenda is, uh, I want to show you, and first uh, I should introduce what is the structures and what are the unions and what is the purpose and how to declare the structures and how to access the elements into the structure all under the part of the introduction. After that, we'll work on some examples of structures, some example programs. After that, uh, we can create multiple structures. Okay, one structure can access for multiple students. Okay, multiple employees, multiple products. So that's the reason I can go for uh, array of structures. I can go for array of structures. So what are the topics I'm going to define? Introduction to structures, example programs, followed by array of structures. Array of structures. The next one is using type def in structures. Using type def in structures. Yeah, actually today, I'm also watching uh, live streaming. Why? Because uh, even my system is showing the fourth point, but I think in YouTube, uh, no, in the live, you could not see the fourth point, right? So it is taking something uh, delaying. I don't know. Yeah, now it is coming. Yeah, the fourth topic is using type def in structures. Then the fifth one is nested structures. Fifth one is nested structures. That means sometimes a structure should contain of inside the structure. Like how we have used for nested for loop, have we used in the uh, two dimensional arrays concept? Nested for loop. That means a for loop within the another for loop. Nested for loop. Yesterday we have discussed uh, two uh, for I and outer loop and as well as inner loop. Okay. That is called as nested for loop. Similarly, here also we can use nested structures. A structure within the structure we call it as nested structure. A for loop within for loop we call it as nested for loop. If condition within if condition we call it as nested if statements, right? Likewise, we have oh, nested statements. The last one is unions. Uh, I can show you the differences of similarly unions is also similar to the structures, but some little bit uh, no variation will be there. I can show you the differences of the unions, whereas the memory concept as well as you know 
the way of uh, allocating the memory. Yeah, so that is the today's agenda. Now, let us start with, I think uh, still in uh, YouTube, I think you couldn't see, uh, yes, now it's getting introduction to union. Yes, fine, fine. I'll do slowly. And now I understood. Why? Because uh, the streaming problem. So whenever I move to the next point, uh, that is not immediately affecting the streaming. Yeah. Now, till now, I didn't say anything. I just said uh, only the agenda. Okay, don't worry. Till now, I said only the agenda. Okay, I have not yet started any topic. Fine, let us move to the topic one by one. Yeah. Structures in C. I just to open now uh, the definition of the structures. No problem, I will wait. I know, I understood that uh, you have not uh, visible this screen now. Yes. Yes, now I think, uh, yes, now it is okay. Yes. What is the structure? A structure in C, it is user-defined data type that enables us to store the collection of different data types, right? Each element of structure is called a member. Okay. So now, how to declare the structure? See, we should create like this, struct keyword by using struct keyword followed by structure name, data type, members. That is whatever the fields you want. Like if it is a student, we have the members, student number, student name, and uh, anything, student number, student name, marks, and whatever you want, you can create. And in case of employee, employee ID, employee name, salary. Yeah. Now, what I can do, I will show you how to create a structure. Yeah. Now, now I just open the notepad. Now I just open notepad. I'm going to show you creation of the structure. I'm just waiting. Yeah. Yeah, now how to define a structure, right? So now if you want to create a structure for employee, employee, what are the data members of the employee? Employee number, employee name, salary. Assume like this. Yeah. 
Yes. How you are going to create strike followed by employee. That is my name of the structure. What are the fields? Data type into Now slowly nothing but it is like streaming issue. Now I understood. Now I understood it is a it is a streaming issue. Strike employee which is having employee number, employee name, salary, right? How I can create employee number care employee name of something 20 and you can create float cell yeah, like this semicolon like this we can create a structure Yes. Now, now a structure name is employee, which consists of which consists of three data members. What we call data members. What we call data members. What are the members of the employee? Employee number, employee name, salary. In case of student data members, sir. Your student number, student name, address, phone number, and so on. Like this, you can create any structure. Okay. So now, this is the way of creating a structure. This is the way of creating a structure. Now, the next point is, once you are clear with the creation of the structure, how can we access? How can we access? How can we access the data members of the structure? Yes. See, this is the example. See, strike employee ID, name, salary. I just opened uh, another PowerPoint. I just opened another PowerPoint slide that is showing example i think uh, still it is not uh, showing in your uh, streaming that is also i'm watching now that's why i'm waiting i'm also watching streaming what is there yeah now you can see this slide example structure employee which consists of integer id name salary here you can you should understand the terminology what is the struct? Struct is the keyword. If you want to create any structure, we should use a reserved word like if, while, for. How we have used a C programming, you know, reserved words. Likewise, to create a structure, we are using struct keyword. Are you clear? Struct keyword. Yeah. Followed by employee. That is my own name. Any name you can give. Employee is the name of the structure okay so what are the fields you have those fields we call it as members or fields of the structure we call it as this id name salary are the members of the structure employee fine so now now how the memory is allocated how the memory is allocated I just open another slide now. I just open another slide now. How a memory is allocated? If you create a structure, how the memory is allocated? Yes, if you see here, how a memory is allocated? You see in this slide, memory allocation yes so now 
Uh, what is there for integer? Right, we have three fields. One is int id. Next one is name. Third one is salary. Okay. So id integer. How many bytes it will occupy? Four bytes it will occupy. Right. Four bytes memory will be occupied for the integer. Right. That is address is thousand, thousand one, thousand two, thousand three. Up to that four bytes. After that, for name where it is started, name address is started at the memory address of thousand four. Yeah. So how many characters? Each character occupies one byte, right? So here, what is the size of the character? Char name of ten, right? So that's why it will take ten characters. So totally integer four. Character here name of ten. That's why it is total size is ten plus float. Float occupies four bytes. Float occupies four bytes. Totally how much? Eighteen bytes. So that is the size of the employee EMP. Right? Fine. So this is the way your entire the structure occupies this much size. Now. I'll go with the program. How to access? Yeah, and also declaring a structure variable. This is another very very important point. See, once through the structure variable only you can access the content. You can access the data members. Now I just to open another slide that is declaring structure variable. Yeah, in this slide, yeah, somebody is asking, you know, uh, yes, fine. Uh, Telugu, even though you are coming from the Telugu background, you should try to understand Telugu. Uh, you should try to understand English. Why? Because I am not a foreigner, guy. Okay. Na ke kunchu kunchu achu. We dhan ni Telugu letter jetham. Okay. We should not. That is not procedure. You should understand. Okay. Fine. Now somebody is replying. Yeah, my video quality is there, but maybe in the streaming and uh, your location, and uh, you should uh, keep it to uh, no maximum size. Uh, somebody student is saying video quality. My video quality is uh, very good only during the streaming time. Maybe it is coming very less. I don't know that is. Okay, even uh, I'm also watching in the streaming. Uh, it is okay. Is okay in my. Yes, I mean, like they watch on mobile, so for yeah. some of them it is a problem. So you can yes. go ahead. Yes, ma'am. And also, madam, why I'm a little slow today? Uh, in in this slide, in this you know, uh, the streaming. Uh, I'm also watching another laptop. Okay, well, after the sliding, moving also in the streaming, it is not showing that slide. That's why students. Sir. No, so streaming will be five seconds uh, slow, sir. Entire. Uh, you know, whatever you are teaching, the audio, video, everything will be five seconds slow. So it mm -hmm. should not be problem, sir. You don't follow YouTube. You go as per your speed only, sir. Okay, All right. okay ma'am. No, if I go like this, they are dragging the madam. If I explain next slide, uh, they won't understand. Okay. That's why I'm thinking. Yeah, no issue. No issue. I'll I'll manage. I'll I know watching both. Okay, uh, sir. But a little uh, slow will be there. Yeah. Yeah, but now the next topic is declaring structure variable. Okay, there are two ways of declaring structure variables. One is by using structure keyword within the main function, and another one is declaring variable at the time of defining the structure. I'll run in the both ways. Okay, so here I have just opened struct employee int id char name float salary by using the struct keyword. And followed by the your employee structure name, and this is the structure variable e1 comma e2 and so on. Any structure variables you can access. Once after declaring a structure variable, 
how to call this data member, how to access the data members by using, say here, your structured variable is the E1, like alias name. See, for every student, one student name is Ravi, but he has his own alias name like uh, Chinni, Nani, Bujji, like this, right? So everybody has its own alias name. Likewise, here we should access the data members with the help of this structured variable. Okay, so how can I access with the help of the operators dot? So e1 dot id, e2 dot e1 dot id, e1 dot name, e1 dot salary, like this. Like this, we should access it. Yes. Yeah, now I will open the notepad. I'm going to explain here. And now I just open the notepad in the main. Yeah, now creation of structure is like this. Strict employee we have created. We have created a structure, employee, employee number, employee name, salary, right? Yeah, now how to access? We should create a structured variable. How to create a structured variable? By using the keyword, struct employee E1. This is the structured variable. This is the structured variable in your main program. This is, I have created outside of the main. So you can do two ways. You can create outside of the main or inside of the main. I'll show you both. Once if I create outside of the main, it will be like this. Strike employee E1. Yeah. How can I access it? How can I access it? E1 dot employee number equal to 10. E1 dot employee number equal to 10. In case you want something float also, you can do like this e1 dot sal equal to something 5000 but here in case of you know uh, name directly i should not give string copy i'm using string copy e name how can i call e name e1 dot e name comma something gopal all right yeah Now you should understand here, creation of structure is completed. How to access it with the help of the structure variable. E1 dot, this is the dot operator. You know, during the operators, you could understand dot operator. Okay. E1 dot, E1 dot employee number. E2 dot employee name. Sorry, E1 dot employee name. E1 dot salary. Like this. That means every student this is how many students here one student okay what is that one student what is the name of the student what is the number of the student what is the salary of the student likewise right so this student id like this employee id is 10 this employee salary is 5000 this employee name is gopal likewise okay so likewise we can access the data members of the structure with the help of the structured variable and like this with the dot operator. Now, how can we print it? Reading is okay. Okay, here we have initialized. We have initialized. You can read at runtime by using scanner file. So that I can show you now. Okay, uh, I can show you after completing this. After that, you can print it, right? Simply, how can you print it? Employee, employee ID, percentage D, comma. What is employee ID? E1 dot ENO like this. Okay. E1 dot employee number. Then in case of name, printf employee name percentage yes. You can use backslash n, which is required. Yeah. Comma E1 dot name e name and so on, right? And uh, salary also, similarly, salary also. 
winter salary percentage year backslash n comma even dot sal like this you can access the create the structure and you can access the elements and you can print it now let me open the program let me open the program dev c++ i just open yes now i understood about the streaming so now here of course what i will do uh, i will type in the notepad and uh, in the program i will directly run this program same program see structure i have created employee and what are the data members id name of 30 name i just take two variables id and name and in the main program i have created struct emp what is this created structured variable what is e1 it is the structured variable and then how to access it through the structured variable only we can access the data member so e1 dot id equal to 10 whatever you want you can assign instead of 10 you want to read through scanner we can that is the next example okay next example i can tell you and now i want to use string copy even dot name comma why because even dot name comma any name you can give any uh, gopal or suresh or something name so this is the reading statement that why how we have accessed the data members with the help of the structured variable simply directly assigned data then after that i just printed employee details employee details i just printed employee details employee id is what is employee id you should not access directly only id through the structured variable only we can access even dot id even dot name okay even dot id even dot name okay so since we are using str cpy string copy so string copy is used to yeah somebody is asking about the string copy string copy is used to copying you know string into the variable okay that we have used a string copy string length string uh, you know comparisons string functions are there okay so which is there in the this function it is there in the string dot h adder file so how we are using for print of stdio.h standard input output adder file right similarly i am using you know for all string functions like string copy string length string comparison string end length string end copy many things are there all the string related functions are there in the header file string dot h since you are using string copy you should include the, your related header files if you use any mathematical functions you should include math dot h okay fine now let me run this program yeah what is the output we just displayed employee details are employee id is 10 employee name is gopal employee id is 10 employee name is gopal so now here emp is our own data type emp is what it is my own data type name is emp okay there is no predefined data type called emp i can create any emp data type or product data type or student data type or anything like you know uh, any based on the requirement based on the data uh, uh, you are going to store anything you can create by your own name that is with the help of the topic called structure okay so there is no predefined data type like this right employee is a combination of id and name so so through this i'm going to store all this data i hope you understand how to create a structure how to create a structure and uh, you know this is very much essential now if you want to go for any type of 
you know structured with array structured with function structured with you know um uh, various topics uh, structured within the structure anything you should understand this is the first program okay so now i'm repeating i just did only one point here we have created a structure with the help of the struct keyword and with the name of any variable name here this is your structured variable and whatever the data you want you can create it as a members of the structure these are called it as members how can we read the data into these members how to read data into the structured variable yes with help of the structured variable you should create a structured variable and then the structured variable dot the data member you can access like this okay yeah so can we can we write this structure within the main program also yes we can okay yes we can write this structure into the main program also that is another method see here see this program is showing same i didn't change anything same program but what i did what i did only the same structure i kept within the program within the main i think uh, still it is not showing i just open another method i just open another method <clears throat> yeah in this screen you can understand a uh, previous uh, this structure whatever i created which is the which is in main program earlier i have created outside of the main program okay fine this is i have created outside of the main program earlier now i kept here the difference is again i no need to create like this uh, what does it mean of emp followed by emp1 like this i no need to create why because within the main program uh, the system can understand that what is e1 this structured variable see here i have created as soon as i ending the employee structure i just written structured variable you should terminate it with semicolon that is very important a structured variable terminated with the semicolon if you write outside of the main you should mention to this main program like uh, struct followed by emp followed by e1 like this you should write here the program is same okay i just uh, how to access e1 dot id e1 dot name like this you can access e1 dot id equal 10 and uh, e1 dot name comma abc and uh, anything you can write yeah i just printed like this so in this method i have written within the main program and i'm going to run this program yeah i got the employee id is 10 employee name is suresh i just now i have executed now i am watching this my no uh, run screen after executing i got the output tenan suresh yeah now now <clears throat> these are the two methods are completed now the another way is you need to access this you need to access you need to access instead of assigning this instead of reading directly you need to read through the keyboard right yeah that's why we are going to read through the keyboard
Yes. You just watch this. Yeah. How I am going to uh, read at runtime? Yes. Enter employee ID, name, and scanner percentage D percentage yes. Reading ampersand employee ID comma employee name. Same. I am reading the data like this. Employee ID, employee name. I'm just printing employee details on even.id, even.name. What is the difference here? Previously, I just assigned into directly employee ID equal to even.id equal to something, even.name equal to something I have assigned, right? Now I'm reading through the keyboard at runtime. Scanner percentage D, ampersand employee ID. For strings, we should not give ampersand, right? Even.name, that you know the basics. Yes, now let me run this program. Yeah, it is asking employee, enter employee ID name. I'm going to enter employee ID 10, name, Gopal. Then I got employee details are, employee ID is 10, employee name is Gopal. Employee ID is 10, employee name is Gopal. Now you can see the output, enter employee ID name. I just given the two values ID 10, name is Gopal. Now I got the output, employee details are, employee ID is 10, name is Gopal. Second. Now I'm watching uh, this one, employee ID, employee name, and you know, uh, this is the output of uh, the previous program, but uh, in, the, in the streaming still, I didn't get that one. I don't know why. Okay, now fine. Yeah, now let us move to the next topic. Now let us move to the next topic. Yes, so far what we did, so far what we did, this is for one employee, right? This is for one employee. Employee number, employee name, I can remove the salary, not required, so that uh, to make it easy. Yeah, I just removed this salary, not it required. Yeah, now, fine. Now see, if this is the structure for one employee, right? Yeah, if I want multiple employees, if I want the same data for multiple employees, okay, what I can do? I can say, if you want three employees, E1, E2, E3, E4, like this. You can enter like this. So then how you can access? How you can access? Same thing, you should write for multiple times. You should access E2 dot 
employee number equal to 11 e2 dot employee name comma suresh like this okay for multiple employees i'll give you only two here yeah so this is very tedious task right if you want if you want access 100 students then what we will do if you want same this is for this is for this is for two employees right this is for two employees this is for two employees if you want to create 10 employees what you will do if you want to create for 10 employees what you will do yes again writing e2 comma e3 e4 it is very risky process right so that's why what you can do okay you can create like this how many you want array of you want five you want hundred like this E1 of 5 employee E1. This is for my identification. Okay. This is called a, an array. Array of structure. Now the next topic is array of structures. Yes. So, in case of array of structures, how it is going to be created? See, employee of zero, this entire structure like having, okay, if you see, if you observe in this diagram, if you create like this, what you can do? See, struct employee, int id, care name of file, float salary, Okay, strike employee EMP of 2, right? You can create an array EMP of 2 or EMP of 10 like this. So if you create, how the memory is going to be created? How the memory is going to be created? Yes, like this. This entire structure like int, care, name, sal, this entire structure is one array that is EMP of 0. And the next one is this entire structure is EMP of one like this. So this is an array of structure, right? Yes. So how can we access a multiple values? Yeah. Let me explain now. I will take the program and I will explain. Yes. Simply how you can create yeah, instead of E1, I can also create EMP. Yes, now I will explain here. In case of an array, in case of an array, how you can access this one? Yes, now this everything is an array okay now here you can take for loop for i equal to zero i less than five i plus plus earlier we know how to access the data member of employee number scan f percentage d percentage yes comma ampersand employee number i need to give right how to give employee number emp dot employee number i have given now what is that emp of i dot employee number are you clear emp ampersand emp of i dot employee number and then emp dot e name mp dot e name yeah now it will take 
how many stretches you have created an array that many times this loop is executed okay so simply i'll just put open braces and ending braces yeah that's it likewise you can read uh, your employee number employee name five times so five employee records employee number employee name you can take that means entire the structure also i can use as a array yeah how can we print all the details this is for reading right for printing how can i print all the data printing all employee details how can i print all employee details same thing like i should use for i equal to zero i less than five i plus plus and then print f yeah whatever you want employee id percentage d backslash n comma what is that emp of i dot eno similarly print f you can use employee name percentage yes backslash n comma emp of i dot e name that's it return zero you can close me yeah like this like this you can create like this you can create an array of an array of the structure and you can access with help of the for loop you can read 100 employees also right with a single statement if you kept in the for loop okay so after that you can print like this now this is the way you can work with structured with an arrays okay let me open the editor and i'm going to show you how to run this program see this is example of a rough structure here i have just given two structured variables what is that a student earlier we have discussed about um, employee now we have created with student what is that structure data members role number name yes now here i want to take three student data how i can create the structured variable strict student st of 3 this is structured variable right so strict student what is the structured variable st without array simply i can say st now with array i can say st of 3 that means what you can store st of 0 st of 1 st of 2 okay now what happened here enter the records of three students for i equal to 0 for i equal to 0 okay what happened here three times this loop is executed enter row number i am going to read st of i dot row number st of i dot row number that means where it is going to be store st of 0 dot row number of that st of 0 dot name for better understanding i can open paint i can also show you like this see how many structures are created see here you can create three structures here so this is one structure with the name what is the name st of 0 what is that st of 0 here in this st of 0 what is the data your roll number will be there your id and your name and again another structure will be created like this another structure will be created like this what is the name st of 1 st of 1 and another structure will be created 
and for i value zero right one structure and within that what will be there your roll number will be there right your roll number so assume that your roll number if you give 10 this is the roll number name what is your name what is your name you can give like something ravi you can give ravi okay fine so this is one time if you have stored st of 0 dot roll number is 10 st of 0 dot name is ravi after that again another loop is created right i value becomes one so in this st of i same your roll number your name will be there next i becomes two again another id is another structure is created with the name of st of two okay yeah st of two so again this is also having roll number and roll number and name okay after reading this how you are going to do now you can see i just open the paint also i just open the paint also okay i'll give you i'll wait for 2 minutes so you try to understand okay you can give you know a structure while storing the data you have two structure members one is row number other one is the name okay once after storing this until this part is for storing after that i need to printing how can i print student information list again i'm printing okay yes to roll number percentage d st of i dot how can i access st of i dot roll number that means st of zero dot roll number will be printed after that st of zero dot name and then i becomes one st of one dot roll number st of one dot name likewise all the details will be printed am i clear like this a structure will be stored multiple structures will be created and we can store the data we can print it now now let me run this program i should enter some records i am going to run this program yes now i am having the screen Yeah, I have just executed. Now, this is the my screen. Yeah, now enter your roll numbers. 10, name, something Gopal. How many times it will ask? Three times it will ask, right? Yeah, another roll number is 11. Name, Suresh. In the roll number 12, something Naresh. Yeah, finally I got the output. Student information list, roll number 10, name Gopal, roll number 11, name Suresh, roll number 12, name Naresh. So like this, you can, previously we have given only one student data, now with the help of this structured with arrays i have given array size is three and three employees three student data i have read and i have displayed those data similarly you can read 100 students data without extending your code without extending your code Yeah, Aniruddh Rao say asking e, <clears throat> e name of 20 stores 20 characters only, not 20 names. If you want 20 name, like that means one name size is 20 characters. Okay. If you want 20 names with 20 characters, then you should create two dimension array, like uh, name of 2020. 
two arrays you have to use, two dimensional array you have to do. Okay, that during the strings concept I will explain. Okay, fine. Are you clear about Anirudh? Here it will take only 20 characters, not 20 names. Each name having 20 character size, that's it. Yeah, now. Now, let me, okay, this is the concept of structured with arrays. Now, fine. Now, let us move with another topic. A structure within the structure. Okay. Now let us move with another topic. A structure within the structure called nested structure. So when I can use the nested structure, say for example, every student. Okay. First, let me explain in the notepad. Yes. Now, when I can use uh, another structure, say for example. <clears throat> If we want to create struct student is having okay student ID okay fine name okay I can say twenty size fine in case <clears throat> address you want address okay what is the another variable student address I want to create an address. What exactly address consists of? I can't say only symbol string, right? Address of 30, I can say something I can write, but address itself consists of some fields. What is that? Your uh, apartment name, your, you know, plot number, your street, and your, you know, pin code, okay, your location, and like this. Okay, so this address itself has some fields address itself has some more fields now during that situation i can create see now you can understand sid data type is integer name data type is the character but i want a student address is the variable which is of type which is of type structure like this right student address that variable is i can say something address here i can say address addr is the my structured variable are you clear now so now i can create this is a variable of with predefined data type int Student ID is the predefined data type integer I have created. Student name is created with predefined data type char. Now, this is my variable, which is not predefined data type. I want my own data type. What is that? This is of type address. So what is the address? This is already we should create another type called structure. So what I should do? You should create your own data type struct as an address. You can keep whatever the data you want. You can keep whatever the data you want. Okay. What is there here? You want, you know, um, pin code. You want location of 30. Something, anything. Okay. Some more data you can keep. Okay. Uh, anything like you know flat number and street okay anything you can keep here okay you can keep your street of something or area location okay fine now this is the way of now what about this structure student now this structure student itself consisting of another structure address right the structure student consists of another structure address this is already created here okay so this kind of structure is called nested structure this kind of structure we call as a nested structure this kind of structure we call as a nested structure 
now you should understand very very important point okay now if you want to access id how can you access assume that if you have struct student s1 how can i access sid you can access with the help of s1 dot sid directly you can access how can i access s name s1 dot s name whereas okay i'm just giving i'm not using in the any scanner for uh, direct accessing the data i'm just showing you how to access the data member now how to access address see this data member how you can access is this is you know s1 dot address within the address again you have pin code okay how can i access s1 dot addr this one this is your structured variable dot what is the data member pin is the data member pin code again s1 dot this is very much important address dot location s1 dot addr dot street like this you should access so this is outside right so structured variable dot nested structure dot data member okay this is very much important you should understand about this okay like this you can access nested structure data member with help of the s1 dot inset structure variable dot data member okay fine let me show you example i'll show you another example nested structure yeah yes now see here i just created i just open now my editor dev c++ editor okay i just open dev c++ editor yeah now you can see a structure name is address a structure name is address which is having three data members what is that city pin pin code and phone number okay so this is your structure now what is my actual structure my actual structure is structure employee my actual structure is structure employee which is having two fields one is name other one is the address address add that itself is a another structure right now yes now how can we access this strict employee strict employee okay i have created structure strict employee with the variable name emp and then enter employee name city pin and phone number you know uh, how to read all the data members you know how to read all the data members right employee dot name okay employee dot name and then emp dot address dot city emp dot add dot city emp dot add dot city okay and for pin code ampersand emp dot add dot pin why i am using like this this is outer loop right outer structure so this is the structured variable dot outside uh, you know inside the structure dot data member likewise we can access the data members now printing the employee detail same how we are using uh, for reading purpose similarly we can print only name is the 
direct structured variable, whereas city and pin code and uh, phone number are the nested structured variables. That's why I added employee.add.city, employee.add.pin, employee.add.phone number, right? Clear. Now, let me run this program. Okay, let me run this program. Yes, it will ask you, enter employee name. I'm going to enter the data. I'll read the data. Gopal, city is something, Hyderabad. Pin code, you can give anything, 5 lakh 98. Phone number, I'll give you something, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 something. Yeah, I got the data like this. Employee details are employee name, CT, PIN code, employee phone number. So like this, you can enter the data employee name and uh, CT and uh, I have given the PIN code and I have given phone number. And I got the data, employee details, employee name, city, pin code, and phone number. Is that clear? Fine. So, as assignment, what you can do, the same program, the same program, you can practice with array. That means nested structure with arrays. That is also you can do, right? Fine. Simply by adding an array here by adding an array we should use looping that's it you can practice with uh, the same nested structure also with an array so now so nested structure concept also completed now let us move forward so here uh, how to access this nested elements in the nested structure outer structure dot nested structure dot member Yes. Now, similarly, you can practice as an assignment uh, uh, another program, right? Same program with the date. This is a, an assignment. You can work on this. Okay. So, what is this in this structure? I have given date, date of joining of the employee. If you want date of joining of the employee, what you can do, you have DD, MM, YYY format. So actual my employee structure is employee having the field ID, employee ID, name, two fields. The third field date of joining is of type date. So I kept as a struct date. My structure variable is the DOJ, stands for date of joining. If you want, give some kind of employee date of joining i have given as a nested structure are you clear so what is the format of the date that's why i have created another structure which is ddmm yyy format isn't it likewise you can you can create a structure within the structure now in this example you can understand <coughs> creating a nested structure there are two ways. One is outside of the structure you can create. That is a separate structure. Uh, the second one is embedded structure. The second example is embedded structure. That means a structure within the structure you can create. A structure within the structure you can create. How? Like this. Uh, ID, name, strict date. Inside you can create DD, MM, YYY format, DOJ. Okay, how you can access of this DD EMP1 dot DOJ dot DD. Same just now we have executed, right? Same thing you can access EMP1 dot DOJ dot MM, EMP1 dot DOJ dot YYY. Like this, you can access nested structure members. How can you access ID? Simply. EMP1 dot ID. 
how can you access name emp1 dot name like this you can access this is the program i have given but you can practice as your assignment yeah why do we use nested structure you tell me why do we use nested structure sometimes in case of you know uh, date there are different subfields are there there are subfields okay under the date we have dd mm by way under the address we have some more subfields are there okay at the time we can do the structures sub structures and also if you want i can give you some more explanation about um, Uh, a nested structure say for example i can give you i can give you uh, another uh, uh, beautiful example in the real time where we can use where we can use uh, nested structures i can give you a real time example like you know uh, uh, pay slip generation if you want to generate employee pay slip see here employee this is one case study employee pay slip okay while generating employee pay slip what are the structures data members i need i need employee details like employee id employee name comma basic salary i need basic salary and also some more fields are there what is the fields like i want you know uh, hra i want uh, dearness elements i want something like traveling elements something and also i'll get some kind of deductions what is that i need to pay something like income tax and some provident fund and something okay and finally you need to calculate some what is your gross salary and what is your net salary what is your take home we call it as net salary these are all data members for the particular employee structure these are all data members of employee structure okay so now how you will create so strat employee employee pay slip for us and you can create employee number okay employee number and then cap e name of something uh, 30 30 and you know uh, you can say float basic salary fine but after that okay you want these data right hra da ta pf it and you know uh, these data so out of this data you can call it as your allowances all the data we call it as allowances at the time what you can do okay inside i can create another structure these are all called allowances that means you are getting something extra other than the uh basic salary okay so what i can do now i can paste here so what is your hra is something your allowances okay and it gives some kind of you know separation it gives some kind of uh, a variation what are all your allowances what are all your deductions like this see like this so this is your inside structure so out of all the data members these are the basic employee details and these are the data comes under the category of elements okay like this you can create a sub structure okay and what are the some another category here deductions you can have some deductions what are the deductions you have you have some kind of provident fund and you have uh, no income tax this is your deduction see this is some more your uh, Uh, another field called okay uh, elements so here you can give shortcut name elo and here you can give shortcut name deductions okay and finally and finally you can create okay you are going to calculate okay net salary gross salary that you can put here or i am going to keep here okay what are the other thing you want to calculate gross salary as well as your net salary okay so finally this is the my structure finally 
this is my pore structure now you please tell me how can i access uh, hra how can i access hra this employee is emp yeah how can i access all the data like if you want to access employee number simply i can say employee number emp.eno you can say emp.ena e name okay if you want to access hra how you can access hra Yeah, Anirudh, not allowances. Dot HRA, EMP. Dot. This is outside, right? This is outside. You please try to understand. Okay. Yeah, EMP. Dot. Hello. Dot. HRA. EMP. Dot. Hello. Dot. DA. Like this. Now, how can I access PF? Tell me. How can I access PF? how can i access pf emp dot so this is outside right emp dot pf under this structure ded right so that's why i can say emp dot ded dot pf yeah i will explain type def uh, next class pawan Pawan, I will explain type def in the next class. For type def and as well as the union. Okay, this is the sequence. That's why I continued all. I will explain uh, type def in the next class. Yeah, emp dot ded dot pf and emp dot directions dot it like this. Okay, are you clear? Like this, same you can access. This demo. This is your assignment. You can take uh, no screenshot. You can take screenshot, and uh, you should do this one. A reading of employee number, employee name, basic salary, and you should calculate the gross salary. How you can calculate gross salary? Your gross salary is equal to your gross is equal to your basic salary plus all your allowances like HRA, DA. And TA, okay. How you can calculate your net salary? Your net salary equal to your gross minus your PF and IT income tax. Okay. Yeah, this is not a program. That's why I just given it is not bad. Okay. Yeah, like this you should read it. You should calculate it all. This is your assignment. Gross salary is equal to basic salary plus all your allowances. Like which are ye the ye to ye. Your net salary is equal to your total gross salary minus your gross minus PF minus IT. Ah, oh, sorry, not IF, IT. Your income tax. Your income tax. Okay, fine. So not IF, it is IT. Yes, that Malathi. By practicing, you will get it. By practicing, you will get it. Okay, Malathi. You should practice by your own. You try with uh, predefined programs, then you can get it. Uh, you no know, more understanding. Okay, so I hope uh, out of the today's agenda, the only the leftover topics are type def and. Uh, A union. This is only you know five minutes to five to ten minutes topic, and in the next class, next session, I can cover this union. See, in this union, we have only one slide. Okay, only one topic we have in the union. I can show you the difference of union in the next session, and I can tell you the type def. Okay, fine. So, I hope you understand uh, what are the topics we have created today. We have created the structure. And uh, we have created structured with you know uh, as an array and uh, structured within this structure. Okay, fine. Yeah, 
and you practice more with all the examples and we'll see you in the next class with union and other topics type def okay till then happy learning thank you thank you sir yeah thank you ma'am yeah shall i stop ma'am yes sir please stop sir you can leave the room yeah